Hello everyone. So today we have a beer bottle cake. It's going to be a Corona cake to be exact. And in this process right here, I just cut the cake in half and filling it with some frosting. The cake is a carrot cake. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I, and I just filled it, put it back on top, measure it and cut it in half. I measured it so that way when I cut it in half, it'll be an even half because what I'm going to do with that other half is stack it. I'm going to stack it on top. So again, filling it in with some frosting. Yummy, 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 yummy. And then I'm going to stack it on top and shave down the top so that it'll be level and also cut off the sides so that it'll be even because you don't want anything pouring out there, right? So that cake was not wasted. Trust me my household had fun with it <laughs> or you can use it for cake pops um cake popsicles um here i am using the label that i'll be using for the cake to just score the cake as they would call it or be able to carve around it now i did not use this label for two reasons it was a fail because it got wet it's an edible label and started to bleed but also i made it a little bit too big i thought so ended up printing it over in the end here i'm just scoring it again to cut the top of the bottle and then i'll shave the cake around the mistake that i made ugh, with this cake oh, oh my gosh is that i did not freeze it prior to doing this because i didn't have time um was a last minute request and i just didn't have time between my other cakes so it made it extremely difficult because the cake was so moist. Oh my gosh. And there was crumbs everywhere. And it's hard to carve a cake that's not frozen. It can easily break. And it's not easy to frost. And it definitely ain't easy to fond it. So here I am frosting it. And in order to get the cake not to be tearing and pulling away, I did use some hot water. So you see some water on the bar board there. It is from the hot water that I basically wet the spatula and then smooth around the fondant. That helps me to make it smooth and also for the cake not to tear. And once it's all finished being coated, I'll then put it in the freezer. You can also put it in the, um, in the fridge to chill. You want that frosting to be hard to touch. When you touch it, you don't want any frosting coming off because you're going to be doing fondant. You don't want any frostings, you know, going out anywhere. So here I have cornstarch and I'm going to roll out some fondant. I rolled it out um, long and slender because that's the shape of my cake. And I didn't want to have to roll out a big wide part and then have to work with excessive fondant. Now this cake, whew. It was so difficult to cover because of the size, not the size, but the shape. So things that have odd shapes become a little bit more difficult to cover, especially when you're wanting smooth edges and, you know, no creasing and so forth. It takes a lot of work, but you just work around it. You smooth down the sides and then you use your pizza cutter or for this, I had a pastry cutter and cut around the edges as you go. And if you see me, I'm wiping with a napkin away the extra crumbs. Now I'm using food coloring to paint it. I could have just colored the fondant, but I like the look of the paint better. It's shiny, it gives it a more wet look. For the top, I just take the black fondant, cover it, cut out little ridges and painted it with the silver. Here I am putting on the new label. And here is the final product. Tell me what you think. So that's how the top, that's how I was telling you. I cut the little ridges in and I added some little lime slices. Thought they were cute. And a opener for your bottle because come on, you got to open it. Thank you.